a New Year's kind of resolution maker. I love to do it. I don't know. I test myself, first of all, like to see if I'm really that good at breaking, like, because I break habits really easily. You can try me, but uh, yeah. So I'm like, maybe I can set goals too, right? <laughs> so my New Year's resolution is kind of like what I'm going to be preaching about. And I made a little slogan for myself. And it always comes back to me, and it kind of helps me to keep this resolution. Whoa. So the title of my message and the slogan of this year for my resolution is, quotes, what if, end quote, what if. And it's not just, what if this happens? What if the world ends tomorrow? Oops, they didn't do it on December, whatever. <laughs> this is the kind of what if, like, what if in the moment you're in, God can still use you? What if you did this? What if? What can God do through you in that moment? So let's go to Luke 18, verse 21. And this is about the rich man. Um, you'll be surprised what I got out of it, but um, it says, The man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. <clears throat> when Jesus heard this answer, he said, There is still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Uh, but the man heard that but when the man heard this he became very sad for he was very rich when jesus saw this he said how hard it is for rich to enter the kingdom of god and then skipping down 26 it says those who heard this said who in the world can be saved but jesus replied what is impossible for people is possible for god amen, amen. so god loves to do the impossible yeah. he loves to do it like creating the world, that's impossible. Uh, but right now what I'm learning is it happened from an RNA strand. It multiplied 100 billion times and here we are. So no, God loves to do the impossible. He loves to make RNA strands and DNA strands or whatever. So um, like things can't stop him from being the impossible God who is actually able to do all things. And so, um, my question is, what have you already done for God? And like this rich man, he was following all the rules. He was doing as much as he could, but there's always more that God is willing to do through you, and um, you just need to be willing to be open to that and what he has planned for you. Um, so when the disciples asked how anyone is able to be saved, Jesus meant that God is not finished in his work. He's not, like, if you're wondering and you're going about your day, like, thinking, you know, there's always like revival calls, tent meetings, different services to get people to come to God, to come to the altar. And then you're thinking, well, there's so many more people that haven't been saved yet. Well, God is still doing a great work in this world. And so let's go to Exodus chapter 2. You guys are fast. <laughs> okay. And starting just 20, verse 24. Uh, this is after, okay, never mind, verse 23. Years passed and the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. And so then turning to chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. And one day, Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared at in, in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. So this is where um, my message comes in. It's God is still alive, and he's still present. So when Moses, um, we know earlier, he was trying to help out his Hebrew people. He had a heart for them, and he knew they were being oppressed. So he tried to help them, and he had that desire. But sometimes we don't know how to use ourselves in those situations to help like our people who are suffering and don't know God. Um, 
But it doesn't really work out that way you know, for who knows reasons, you know, like maybe our heart's not in the right place or um, it's not the time or maybe you need to pray more about it. But so like Moses, he ended up killing an Egyptian. And so that kind of like leads that doubt. Like, how do you reach out to those people? Like, if God can save them, how are you going to do it, you know? So um, Exodus 3.9 says, Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. So our Christian calling is to serve, so we are fully aware that we should do it. But the question of doubt comes when God calls us to action. And so... Um, in verse 4, God gives Moses signs of how he's going to use him. He's turned the staff into a snake and then back into a staff. He, uh, Moses pulled, put his hand in his cloak, and it came out, and it was leprosy. There was a disease on his hand. Like, this doesn't happen normally. <laughs> and he also said um, that the water from the Nile is going to turn into blood if you pour it on the ground. So what do all these, these, these things mean? So... God is doing the impossible. He's like showing Moses that I'm going to do that. I can do all these things. You don't have to doubt me. And it seems kind of weird because like if you think in our own situation, like there's no Nile in Washington. <laughs> um, but still, like God's not asking us to jump off a cliff or do crazy things that are going to put us out of our own way. But just in those situations to wonder kind of like if you see a burning bush, if you see a need, fill a need yeah. from a movie. <laughs> um, so just go and just ask God, what if? Come on, like, God, you called me. I'm a Christian. I have that faith. I know you can do great things. You are the God of the impossible. What if I go talk to that person? What if I do this? What if, what, how are you going to use me? What are you going to do with me? And so that's... Um, that's the attitude we should have for God because Moses, he didn't have it at first. He said, I can't speak. I can't do it. I don't, I don't want to, God. You're cool. You're awesome. I'm so excited. I saw your burning bush, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> so God kind of got angry, like, oh, man, you know, just that attitude. We should have that what if, like, if you, what if Moses didn't in the end? What if he didn't end up following God? We wouldn't be reading about him. I don't know, we'd be reading about Alex <laughs> 2,000 something years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so always ask yourself that question. I want to encourage you to do that for this year too. Like, what if God used you in that moment?